I'm Miss Laura, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about independent and dependent variables. So you've probably talked about independent and dependent variables in science before, but um, what you need to understand for math is it's very similar. Basically, the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. The independent variable is oftentimes what we control or change in the situation. Sometimes, however, it's not what we control or change. It can be what's doing the controlling. Now, I'll get to that a little bit more in just a second. Let's talk about dependent variables now. The dependent variable is the result of the independent variable. A lot of times it's also the outcome or even the consequence of a situation. Now, in math, we do deal with problem situations, but a lot of times we're also going to be looking at independent and dependent variables as numbers. So the thing to keep in mind here is when we're looking at the independent variable, this will always be represented of the x variable in a situation. The dependent variable or the result or the outcome is always the y variable. And remember, for every x that I input into a situation, I will always get out a y. Therefore, independent is what I'm changing, dependent is the outcome of it. Now I want to talk about one variable that pops up a lot when we're looking at situations, and that's time. Now time is not something we can control, but a lot of times it's what's doing the controlling. It's going to continue whether we want it to or not. And so therefore, when you see time as an independent or as a variable in one of the problems, it's generally going to be the independent variable. Let's look at an example now. So we know, obviously, that there's a relationship between the number of hours that I or Sarah works um, at any job and the amount of money that she's going to get paid for that job. So the question is, what depends on what here? Does the hours working depend on the money or does the money made depend on the hours worked? Well, if you think about it for a second, you should know that if I work more hours, I would get paid more. Therefore, the money made depends on the hours worked. So I'm looking at identifying the independent and the dependent variables here. What I'm controlling or what she's controlling in her situation is the hours worked. So therefore, the independent variable, and you'll see me abbreviate it with IV, is the hours that she's worked. Now, the result or the dependent variable of the hours that she's worked is going to be the money that she's made. And again, the more hours that she works, the more money that she makes. Now let's look at several more examples that will give you an idea of how to identify independence and dependent variables. Let's start with this one, the number of dishes that need to be clean and the number of people at a party. So if I'm throwing a party and I don't have anybody coming, then I don't have many dishes, right? But the more people that I attend my party, the more dishes that I have to clean at the end of my party. Therefore, the number of dishes that I have to clean is going to be dependent on the number of people that attend my party. That means that the independent variable or the thing that I can control is the number of people that attend my party. And again, the dependent variable or the, the result of the number of people that attend my party are the number of dishes that I have to clean. So the fewer people I have come to my party means the less dishes I have to clean and the more people I invite, that means the more dishes I have to clean. So as the number of people increases, the number of dishes also increases. That means the independent variable again is the number of people. And then the dependent variable is the number of dishes. Let's try another one. So this one says the age of a BMW and the value of the car for the first 10 years. So I'm going to just use a graph to represent on this one. Let's say that when I buy a car initially, what do you expect the price of the car to be? Probably fairly expensive, right? Especially if I'm buying a BMW. Okay, so now, after a few years, what happens to the price of the car? Especially after 10 years. That price of the car isn't going to be as valuable as it was when I first bought it. So therefore here, the, the value of the car is dependent on the age. And this is one where time is involved. We see this age as a factor of time. So therefore, when I'm looking at a graph of this, my independent variable, or the thing that's doing the controlling here, is the age. And again, I can't actually control it, but it is is what's determining. So the age of the car is the independent variable, 
And then the price of the car would be the dependent variable here. So I expect that the price of the car to start with be fairly expensive, and then as time goes on, it's not going to be as expensive. So as age uh, increases, the price decreases. So again, the independent variable is the age, and the dependent variable is the price. All right, this one's a bit of an economics lesson. This one says the amount of Fredericksburg peaches grown and the price of the peach. When you think of this one, I want you to think of it like the cost of gas even. When the cost of gas rises, it's because there's not a lot of gas out there to get your hands on. Now, when the cost of gas decreases, it means that we have an overabundance of gas, just as if we were to grow peaches. So when there's not that many peaches, the price is more expensive. But when there's too many peaches than we know what to do with, the cost isn't that much. It's easy to get a hold of, therefore uh, the, the price of it drops. So if I look at it on a graph, the price of the peach depends on the amount of peaches that I have. Meaning the number of peaches is going to be my independent variable, and the price or the cost of each peach is my dependent variable. So looking at it graphically, if I don't have a lot of peaches to sell, then the cost is really high. Whereas if I have a lot of peaches to sell, the cost is very low. So as the number of peaches increases, the cost decreases here. All right, so this one says the amount of food in a well-stocked refrigerator and the number of people who can eat an afternoon snack. So now obviously, if I have an empty refrigerator, I'm not gonna be able to feed very many people. If I have a little bit of food, then I can feed some, and if I have a lot of food, then I can feed more. So the more food I have in the refrigerator, the more people who can eat. Let's look at it graphically. So the number of people that can eat depends on the amount of food that I have. Therefore, what I'm controlling, or the independent variable in this situation, is the amount of food that I have in my refrigerator. The dependent variable, the result of the amount of food that I have, is the number of people who can eat a snack. So if I don't have a lot of food, then not a lot of people can eat. But the more food that I have, the more people can eat. So as the amount of food in my refrigerator increases, the number of people who can eat also increases. This last one talks about the height of a tree and the number of years since it's been planted. This one's fairly simple to think about. So if I plant a tree as a seed and then watch it grow, I would expect that the tree get bigger with time. Therefore, the height depends on the number of years since it's been planted. And again, here's that time as a factor uh, and a variable for our situation. So therefore, the independent variable here is time, the number of years. And the dependent variable, or, or the result of the number of years, would be the height of the tree. So again, on a graph we'd see, initially when I plant that tree, it's not tall at all. It's probably just a seed even. And as the years progress, we would expect the tree to get taller and taller. So as the years increase, the height of the tree will also increase. So throughout all of this, we're going to look at a way to represent uh, independent and dependent relationships through scatter plots, and a scatter plot is basically just a set of points on a graph. Uh, they're not necessarily in, in a line, they're just kind of scattered throughout the graph, hence the, the title. Um, but there are different types of scatter plots, and what we look at are trends across the data. So overall, generally, which way are the points moving? So there's really three types that you have to know um, that we'll look at a lot throughout this entire year. And then there's another two types that you'll see as well, but not as commonly as the first. So let's talk about each of these. So first of all, we're going to look at a positive correlation. So basically what a positive correlation means is that as one of the, in, the variables increases, the other also increases. So we want to see a trend across the data of the points increasing or going up. Now, if you'll notice on a scatter plot, we're not always going to connect the dots. That's not what the point is. The point is to draw a line of what we call best fit. And a line of best fit generally goes through the data. So you'll notice here that most of the points fall close to the line, maybe not necessarily exactly touching it, but we have some above and some below that run through the data. So again, with positive correlation, we're looking at it increasing. All right, the second 
is a negative correlation, and, and just as it would um, say, it's the opposite of a positive. So what happens in a negative correlation is one value increases, the other value decreases. So we're going to draw again a line of best fit through the graph. Um, that In this one, we're going to notice it goes down. So this one is decreasing. So in negative correlation, you'll see a trend of decreasing points across your graph. Now, the third most common is what's called a no correlation. These are problems that aren't going to make any sense at all, that they have no relationship to each other whatsoever. And I'll give you some examples of those on the assignment. But a no correlation, notice we can't really draw a positive line or a negative line through the graph. What happens to encompass all the data is we would just draw a circle. So you'll see me draw a circle and this would be a no correlation type problem. There's no relationship among the data. All right, now, the last two are undefined correlations. So this is either a vertical line or a horizontal line. So generally, you're going to see a trend that it stays constant here, either in a horizontal line or in a vertical line. So really, it's unchanging throughout the data. All right, so let me give you an example now. So. Joe's a fisherman, and he weighs each fish that he catches and measures its length. And he graphed his data in this scatter plot over here. So if we look at the scatter plot, we're going to notice that the fish length is on the x-axis. That means it's the independent variable. And the fish weight is on the y-axis. That means it's the dependent variable. So the length of the fish controls the fish's weight. And we would expect that. You know, the longer the fish is, the more it probably weighs. So if we're looking at this and to represent it on the scatter plot, what type of correlation it is, we would say that as the lengths of the fish increase, their weights are generally going to increase as well. So this means that it would be a positive correlation. And what we would see is in this trend here, again, if I draw my line of best fit, I'm going to notice that these points generally increase across this graph, hence again meaning that it's a positive correlation. Now, just to clarify again on a line of best fit, the line of best fit goes through the data. It doesn't necessarily connect each point, but it would go through most of the points and touching as many as possible. So this would be a line of best fit for this graph here, and notice it is decreasing, so this would actually be a negative correlation. And remember, keep in mind um, looking at the trends in the data to determine the correlations. So hopefully that helped you to have a better understanding of independent and dependent variables in algebra. Make sure you ask questions now to get a better understanding.